Hello! Welcome to the Self Growth Nerds podcast. As you can see, there is not the playful intro music because I just decided spontaneously to uh, give you a little bonus episode. I feel like I'm sneaking in <laughs> and dropping like a little gift in front of your doorstep, like I did uh, with my neighbors this morning. I baked banana bread last night. And I had way too much, so I went to put a banana bread in front of their door with a little sign that said, best neighbors ever. This stuff makes me really happy. So that's what I thought I'd do with you today. It's Friday. Um, and yesterday, or the day before, I'm not sure, I made a live video on Instagram about motivation. And especially the three popular solutions that do not work. Many of you come to me and say you've been feeling like jaded or heavy or resistant and you always look forward to the weekend. And that's why I want to explore this topic and share with you what I've found helps the most, okay? I do not need to motivate myself. Barely ever. It's very rare. I have a fire burning inside of me that makes things so much easier when I wake up in the morning. Um, and I want to explain how I did this. That's what I do in the video. And since I know not everyone has time to watch Instagram videos, I thought I'd put the audio in here. Okay, so you can benefit from this. It's super insightful. It's like 12 minutes, so really short. Take time to listen, and I'll be back with you for the regular programming next Monday. So in the meantime, have a beautiful weekend, and don't forget to go play outside. Once again, let's pass the mic to previous Marie. I'm gonna get straight to today's subject. I want to talk about lack of motivation because that's what I hear about a lot these days coming not just from my clients, but from people in the DMs. You seem to struggle with motivating yourself, especially at work um, and end up like trying to force yourself into motivation and it just doesn't work or it never works for very long. Um, it's always work that you have to start again, like motivating yourself every morning and then you get to like the middle of Monday and you're already tired and then get to Wednesday and it's like, yes, middle of the week. But the thing is, we don't want to live our whole lives like this, right? We don't want to live our lives waiting for Friday and then enjoy Saturday and on Sunday feel anxious because Monday's coming again and we're gonna have to fit who we are on the weekends into like a small box that feels super tight and uncomfortable. So today I want to keep it short and talk about three surface solutions that are really popular when we talk about motivation, why they don't work, and what you can do instead. So let's dig in with the surface solution number one, and it's to change your attitude. So a client of mine was telling me uh, yesterday, actually, uh, I know I just need to change my attitude, but it doesn't feel real. And I think what she meant when she said it doesn't feel real is that you have you have different thoughts, like positive thoughts here, but in your heart, it doesn't connect. It goes from your it stays in your brain and doesn't connect with what you want in your heart. You guys are all super smart and resourceful. You cannot um, put a cloth over a dirty table. It's it doesn't clean the table, you know what I mean? It just covers a, a problem that's deeper than that. Um, if you see me looking there, it's because I have my notes on my screen. Uh, the part of you who is bored 
and has no motivation at work needs to feel seen and needs to feel heard, not squashed on the need to fake positive thinking. And this, I mean, positive thoughts are good and they can work, but you also have to like put glasses on and look at what's hiding underneath, like weeds. Uh, you don't just like pull weeds out and hope that the root is just gonna magically disappear. It always grows back up to the surface. Um, so what's your adventurous self trying to tell you with this lack of motivation? What What is it trying to tell you on the need the, I wish I was out, outside instead? That's like, Obviously, you wish you were playing outside. Obviously, you wish you didn't have to work. But what's hiding underneath that? If you were to listen to an open heart, what would you find out? What are your deepest desires? And even if they seem too good to be true or unrealistic, like, oh, I would walk out the door and never turn around, or I would quit my job and travel the world, that's okay. You can just let them live, give them room to breathe, let them hang out in your imagination without squashing them. And who knows, there might be some truth to them and there might be a, a version of this that is adaptable to real life, to paying your bills and to being part of civil, civilized society, right? But first you have to let yourself dream impossible dreams or dreams that seem too good to be true all right so forget about thoughts like suck it up you just have to suck it up let yourself dream now surface solution number two changing your environment so we all do it it's things like oh uh, you wake up on a monday morning and you're like oh so you're gonna perhaps keep your pajama bottoms during a Zoom meeting or drink coffee out of a prettier cup, like your favorite mug, or like put a good podcast or good music on when you're doing a task that you don't really want to do. And all those things are great and wonderful. Um, but like I was saying earlier, if they cover some deeper wound, they're like just a little bandaid on top, it runs its course and at some point, it gets too hard. It's like a boat with that's full of holes and it gets too hard to patch. So um, I lost my train of thought with the boat idea. So yes, so when it gets too hard to patch, that's when you're gonna start wanting to leave your job because you feel like oh, you don't have project that motivate you, like your boss doesn't understand you, your boss doesn't see your strengths and you don't feel like you have any impact. And many of my clients come to me when they're at that stage and you'd be surprised what happens when they start showing up as their real self at work. Of course, there's work that we need to do before they are able to feel safe enough to do that. But once they do, stuff happens that they would not have imagined, like better Rec more recognition, better projects, better salaries, just because they started owning who they were. And it's the same thing with your ideas. Many of you have like crazy, creative, brilliant ideas, but you tend to keep them to yourself or to share them with others, but kind of like this, like, eh, I exist, but not too much, like, because you're afraid of being judged, so, you, you, you share your ideas with like half, half heartedly, half confidence. Um, but a client of mine said to me recently, she was like, I realized that if I share my seemingly weird ideas with full confidence and I tell people how they can join, how they can follow me there, they're excited and they want to join, they want a leader. So it's it's not your ideas that are the problem. It's not you who's the problem. It's just how you bring them up. It's just how you show up. 
and when you show up as your uh, bold, beautiful self, then magical stuff happens. Number three. Number three is more cheerleading and more pressure. It's been 10 minutes, so I'm going to get moving. Okay, so when I ask a client what they need to feel more motivated, I often hear uh, variations of I need to be taken by the hand or I need to be, uh, I need like a cheerleader on my shoulder that's like, uh, come on, you can do it. Or either like a soldier that's like, do it now, boot camp style. And this is the guidance, the kind of guidance we are used to receiving. Like when we were kids, um, uh, our parents would be like, stop playing Sims, get off of MSN Messenger, do your homework. Or our teachers would tell us like exactly what was going to be on the exam. And this, so, so it makes sense that we can see this being replicated in our self-talk. We either need to be guided through every step or we yell at ourselves or, we, you know, but that's, I found that there's a more sustainable way and it's to replace motivation, which I think is an empty word because it's like a motivation is about finding external factors to push you or pull you. Replace motivation by inspiration. Inspiration comes from the inside. It's an internal drive to do what you want to do. And that's one of the things I teach to my clients in Brave and Bold, how to feel inspired about your life, how, how to be driven by an inspir inspiring vision. Um, so Brave and Bold applications are open today and you can apply by going to the link in my bio. And how it works is that once you apply, you're going to get an invitation to a private training I'm giving next week on Thursday um, about my three part framework to creating a more fulfilling life. Um, even if you're not sure if you want to be in a program or not, it's worth applying and coming to the private training where you're going to learn more about my approach. And I'm going to tell you uh, the basics of creating this sort of life for yourself. So it's going to be high quality content. The first time I've shared this, I'm really excited for this presentation. It's going to be um, really great and make sure you are there. If everything I've said today resonates with you, with who you are, with where you are in your life rather, then uh, just apply. It's going to take a few minutes and I'm going to let you know as soon as possible. Um, is there anything else I wanted to share? Well, on the training, we're going to talk about crafting a clear and purposeful vision for your life, about gaining the confidence to show up as your full self, like I mentioned earlier step onto a path that's unique to you and take imperfect action in that direction. So I will see you there. I love you so much and that's it. Bye. How do I turn this off now? It's the awkward moment where I don't know how to